Hello, friends. Hey, how's it going? Today, we have a great show for you today. What happens to your mortgage if you were to die? Yes, transferring the mortgage after you die. Guess what? The mortgage stays intact and your heirs still own the money. So that is what happens. Now, if you inherit a property, you still owe the payments on the property. <laughs> so, right, yeah, if you inherit it through a trust or a will or another legal document, then you're still going to have to make the payments. That's right. And if you own a home with a mortgage, be sure you have a plan for your heirs and it's written down somewhere that they can find it. So you have enough liquid cash or whatever you need to have available to keep making the pay the payments, not just on your mortgage, but on whatever your situation is. Nope, you better believe it. Now, um, a, if a spouse or family member, they can take over the payments. Of course, it's a special circumstance when you, uh, you pass away and your spouse in a community property state like California, they can continue making the payments. Of course, all the loans have a due on demand no, um, uh, stipulation in the loan, but there are special circumstances like when you're married in a community property state, your surviving spouse can continue making the payments also. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the same is not true though for unmarried couples or couples living together unless there is a will or a trust that deems the unmarried uh, partner as inheriting the property, then um, that person may have to move out. So be sure you have a will or a trust, uh, definitely when you own a property. Even if it doesn't have a mortgage, be sure that you have a plan for that property. Yes, two people living together, the person that has the home in their name, if they were to die, then the other person has no rights on that unless they are married. Yeah. Remember, it's, I mean, the bottom line is no one is responsible to pay that unless they signed up to um, up front. But then it's up to your will or your trust to deem who's going to make the payment or keep the property or sell the property. Of course, that's always an option too. You sell the property, take the proceeds, and the executor of the state will distribute those proceeds according to your wishes. Of course, if your wishes have been written down. So uh, we couldn't encourage you more or stronger or more, I don't know, to get a trust done. It is worth it. I'm going to run through an example here so you can see what it's going to cost. Um, it is definitely a bargain to get a trust set up ahead of time because not only um, do you take care of your property, but you potentially have other things that you need to take care of and it's all done ahead of time and there's no surprises and you don't end up paying all the probate fees, which I'm going to get into here. So another option on transferring your property is the transfer on death deed in certain situations. Um, if it's not a complicated situation, you can transfer on death uh, one to four units um, or a condo or a single family home on under 40 acres can be transferred upon death with a transfer of death deed. So that is also an option too. Of course, we are not accountants. We are not attorneys. We are not giving legal advice or tax advice. We're just letting you know um, what your options are and you should definitely talk to your professional. Yes, it behooves you to get a trust or a will or whatever it takes to make sure that everybody knows what your wishes upon your passing. That's right. Um, another option is to have mortgage insurance called mortgage life insurance. This is an insurance policy to pay off your mortgage should you pass away. Now this money goes directly to the bank. It does not go to your heirs. So if you have a mortgage life insurance policy, um, then it will pay off your uh, mortgage when you die. Yes, it's usually mm -hmm. a term life policy. So as your mortgage decreases in value, the insurance tracks it. That's right. So now if you don't have a will or a trust, um, it's going to fall on the executor of the estate that the court will get involved and they still will need to keep making the payments for you while the estate gets settled. If your estate goes to probate here in California, it's going to take about 18 months to get that sorted out. So you uh, definitely need to have some money in the bank to pay those payments on your mortgage if you end up in that situation. Yeah, depending on the complexity of the situation. I mean, some of them are very simple. They can happen like ours did in 30 days, but it could take up to 18 months if you have a very complicated estate. And the order of assignee, just because I thought this was interesting, um, the court will assign a personal representative if you end up in probate, and it goes surviving spouse, child, grandchild, then a parent, then a sibling. 
So that is the way it goes. And then the judge will make the final determination on who is going to be managing this for you. So if you don't want the judge to make that decision, get a trust. Let us know if you need a referral. We can help you get a state <laughs> attorney and get this taken care of. It is just, I am standing on my soapbox today. Um, California has one of the most expensive probate processes in the country. And I did a little example here just so you can see. Um, you pay the administrative fees, court fees, you, you pay all kinds of fees. So the probate case will be filed in the county that the person passed away in or where the property is. So because we're talking about property here today, let's say you own property in California, you've moved out of state, the probate will be filed where the property is. So just keep that in mind. Um, the federal estate tax kicks in at $13.61 in 2024. Um, and the estate taxes above this are taxed at 40%. So, ouch. Uh, the example, I have an estate value at $1.5 million. So if you have a house and a, some investment account, 401k, and it all adds up to $1.5 million, the probate fee and the administrator fee for the attorneys are $28,000 each. So that starts at $56,000 in fees. And then the way the probate tax works, it's 4% uh, the first 100,000, 3% the second 100,000, 2% the next 800,000, and 1% for the next up to 9 million. So in this example, that totals um, about $85,000 in taxes slash probate fees on a million five estate. Now they take it off the gross. So that means on your say million dollar home, you have a $600,000 mortgage that doesn't take that into account. It's off the gross. They don't deduct the debts against the, the 1.5. They take it off the gross. So um, people that we have heard in the past be don't want to spend a couple thousand dollars on a trust. Well, this is a pretty typical amount here, 1.5 million in California. That might be low, but um, $85,000 approximately it's going to cost. So a couple thousand dollars for a trust is going to save your heirs a lot of money. <laughs> You better believe it. So stay safe out there. Yeah. So if you have any questions, you know where to find us. JerryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.